Here I have an animated space-time diagram. I just click the Pass Time button to animate it. Now, the time is going up and down. So up here you can watch um, events as they come down. Here's the future. Uh, right, the present is right there, and then it goes down into the past. Now, space goes uh, left and right in the diagram, so you can see uh, these objects are moving to the right and to the left, and bam, they wreck into each other right there. Now, if I very carefully draw a diagonal line, it creates something moving at the speed of light, which is a photon, and it comes through really fast like that. I think I can draw one going the other way. I can't remember whether I ever fixed this. Yeah, I can draw it going both ways. Now, in a lot of space-time diagrams, they draw something called a world line, and I've got that incorporated into here. All you got to do is draw a more or less vertical line. But I've also got regular objects, which are two event. Well, in this, they're represented by two events that are simultaneous in their own reference frame. So those are um, objects that are extended through space. Um, but according to the object, those two events are simultaneous. But to, according to us, the, the one on the left occurs before the one on the right. Okay, one thing that you want to be able to do on a space-time diagram is to talk about uh, special relativity. And let's do that for a second by pausing by pausing this uh, demonstration for a second and watch what happens as I well let me do something else first okay I've got these uh, these objects all moving off to the right I'm going to accelerate to the right until those objects are standing still okay so Another thing I could do is have move objects moving off to the left and accelerate to the left until those objects are standing still. Okay, I just paused it and uh, I'm going to create several objects in a row that are all pretty close to stationary. You've got to get the line just perfectly right if you want them to be stationary. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and grab this event here. And what the Lorentz transformation does is it allows me to, to convert all of those, all of those um, objects at once will change velocities. So I can make it so all of those objects appear to be moving off to the right, or I can make it so all of these objects appear to be moving off to the left and that's effectively what the Lorentz transformation does is it makes me accelerate relative to those objects. You can also see on this diagram that the effect of Lorentz contraction, all of these objects appear length contracted when they're moving at a high velocity and when I bring it down like that to a regular speed then um, that's the maximum length, that's their uncontracted length. So, so I can basically I can contract those as much as I want. And when that event, I have to pull the events so that they. When that event gets off the screen, I can't contract it anymore. So I have to use the uh, velocity button to continue to accelerate to the left, and I can contract those those objects down to nothing basically length contract them all the way down to zero by changing the acceleration okay that was the simple part I'm gonna switch straight to a, an advanced concept right now because I was talking about this to someone on uh, the physics forums so I will uh, turn on constant acceleration I'm going to have these objects all be flying off to the right when this constant acceleration is beginning, which means that they'll fly up here and then they'll fly back down. Basically, 
It's as though I threw them all up at about the same rate. Threw them all up into the air, and then they're going to fall back to the ground. So let's watch this. They're going up. They're spreading out. And now they're going to come back the other way. Now what's interesting in the constant acceleration uh, format, there's something called the Rindler Horizon. And what is going to happen is that all of these objects are going to reach a point where um, their velocity and the length contraction of this distance from here to here the length contraction of this distance is exactly balanced by the uh, by their velocity. So the change in length contraction over time equals their velocity, their change in position over time. And so what happens is there, it, all of those objects approach this point right here, but never reach it. Now there's also something else interesting about this point, and I can't really show you exactly. But if I draw an event right there right now, it doesn't move. Like these events are all moving into the past, right? But this event here, well, it did start moving because I can't get it exactly on the point. But you could see it just stays there. So if I create a photon, if I created a photon right there, I didn't manage to get a photon there. That, no, it's hard to draw a photon, I guess. Anyway, photons over here will go straight up. Boop. And photon over here will go... What's it do? It goes straight down to the Rindler horizon until it stops. You can see this event moves off into the past, but events over here on this side, they go into the future. Time runs backwards beyond that point. So um, that's an interesting effect of the render horizon. So I'm going to stop right there because I think this is getting long enough.